process of every pick. So let us begin with the first pick of this year's NBA draft. Uh, this pick belonged to the Atlanta Hawks at number one overall, and they selected Zachary Rizaker. Now, just some quick information about Zachary. He's six foot nine, 195 pounds.
awful he ended up being. I don't think that's all on him. I think a lot of that is the fact that it's the Wizards, so we'll see. After that, we go into pick number three. This block belonged to Houston. We have the Houston Rockets selecting shooting guard Reed Shepard. <laughs> Reed Shepard out of Kentucky. He clocks in at six foot two, 182 pounds. His strengths are listed as a three-point specialist uh, with great instincts and one of the most efficient offensive uh, juggernauts in the college basketball history as a freshman. Uh, however, on his weaknesses, it says that he is a good athlete but has a wingspan that limits him on the defending side and as a finisher. And he also had one of the lowest usage rates of any of the projected draft picks and is unselfish to a fault. Um, and you know, that could see, be seen as a pro and a con, uh, in my opinion. Unselfish to a fault. You can untrain that. You can always be having the ball more at usage rate. Obviously, if you're the Rockets, you can't increase that. And maybe you don't want to. Maybe you trust your other guys a little more. And so you're getting a guy who's a three-point specialist, I've heard. <laughs> I've seen him be called the uh, White Clay Thompson. Obviously, he's a lot smaller. I don't think he's going to be the same defender as Clay, but uh, yeah, shooting wise, maybe. Um, personally, it was a little surprising just with the guards that uh, Houston has taken recently. I feel like they've gone with a lot of athletic young guards that have like a decent amount of size to them. And so, here you get a guy who's not necessarily that build, he is more of a shooter and got yeah, a great talent. Uh, we'll just have to see how he develops around the rest of Houston. We'll have to see. Their team overall is pretty young, but they have some vets in there, like Van Fleet is going to take up a big chunk of the minutes from Evan Thompson, Ray Shepard, uh, Tari and those other guys, uh, Jalen Green. So have to figure out, are they really interested in KD and all this, uh, what direction is Houston going, because they're not in a horrible spot, uh, compared to their other previous seasons, and you have Yameo Daka, so maybe a bright future, we'll see. Uh, after that, we've got the San Antonio Spurs selecting at the number four, and they took point guard Stefan Castle out of Yukon. Uh, he clocks in at six foot six and 210 pounds. And, uh, I think it's a fairly good pick for them. Uh, under his strengths, it's listed that he has an excellent size and length with budding versatility, uh, and that he's very competitive and unselfish and allowed the Yukon Huskies to win their second NCAA championship. Uh, under weaknesses, it mentions that he has a 27% average from the three-point line, and uh, his ability to space the floor will be a swing skill for him in the NBA. So it's a shot, his three-point shot. Well, the NBA does have the best trainers in the world. Uh, you know, you could be, you could have a broke jumper like Lonzo Ball and end up being pretty solid from the three. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, considering he was a freshman, he came into UConn and he was able to help them do yet another NCAA championship. I do think like, he has played with a lot of weight on his shoulders, and I think, hopefully, he can be that point guard um, that the Spurs need. You know, watching the Spurs last year, they're playing Sojan at the one a lot, and he's not really meant for that role. Um, Trey Jones was doing a much better job than him actually dishing the ball out to Wemby, getting in those assists. And Stephon Castle, I think, is a step in the right direction. And he's got a good size to him, so you get a young point guard to train up with Wemby. Uh, and you don't have to worry about him being too small. Great pick, in my opinion. Then, coming in at number five, we have the Detroit Pistons selecting a shooting small forward Ron Holland II. Uh, and he is six foot seven, 197 pounds, and he's being
weaknesses seem much larger. He's got poor decision making and streakiness as a shooter. He also was... Uh, his season was cut short by a ruptured tendon in his right thumb, and he had to miss the last 19 games. So, yeah, a, a little bit of a project prospect uh, that the Detroit Pistons decided to use up here. I do feel like there were other people who are more talked about in this draft. Obviously, I don't know a lot of people, and I don't know what Detroit is trying to do. Uh, I mean, get better, obviously, but the direction of the rebuild, they're, no, they're not in no man's land. They're just at the bottom. They're definitively at the bottom, and they have to take their shot on where they like. I don't know anything about Ron Holland, personally. Just whatever I read right now, and, uh, Detroit is like, I mean, to put it simply, it's hell. It's hell for any basketball player at this moment. So, uh, I wish Ron Holland all the best of luck, but I don't know how I would even succeed if I was in his shoes. Um, so, maybe, maybe send him a prayer if you are of the praying kind. Then, coming in at number six, this was a pick that belonged to the Charlotte Hornets. We've got power forward Tidhane Salou. Salou. I don't know. I did not hear his name get called, so I have no idea. Uh, I feel like every single social media outlet either skipped the Hornets pick or said that it wasn't that good, and I don't know why. Uh, for his strengths, it's listed that he's physically gifted power forward whose length, frame, and budding versatility as a shot maker in defensive intensity stood out uh, during his professional opportunity in France, whereas for his weaknesses it says that he shows ability to make shots on the move, but he lacks much in the way of his ball handling ability, and he is inconsistent in his processing speed. Uh, sounds like me when I play basketball, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, he's expect a late blooming for the 18-year-old at this level of competition. You know, that's kind of an interesting draft analysis. 6'9", 217 out of France. He, he's got the size. It's just about their development. And uh, yeah, it's one of those places where Hornets development, I don't think of positive things. Obviously, Brandon Miller, they took the number two pick and he looked pretty solid towards the end of the season. But when you just think about the recent picks, who has really wowed you they're not a, I mean, LaMelo, yes, LaMelo Ball, but LaMelo was someone that we had heard about for years prior to the Hornets. It was like the Hornets landed LaMelo Ball. It was not like LaMelo Ball landed on the Hornets. Um, whereas this guy, I don't know, maybe I'm casual, but I have not heard of him. So uh, you've got to hope, you've got to hope that the Hornets do him right and that he doesn't get buried under their mismanagement as a franchise. And yeah, another one where maybe include him in your prayers as well. Uh, and then coming in at number seven, this is a pick that belonged to the Portland Trail Blazers. You've got center Donovan Klingon, uh, 7'2", 282 out of Yukon Huskies. Um, and yeah, this guy's a ball of strengths. He was driving force behind the championship run. Uh, you know, very good rim protector, 7 foot 7 wingspan, and uh, impressive timing, and he can cover the floor very well. Um, and then under weaknesses, it says while he's a reliable finisher and offensive rebounder, um, he is still evolving as a scorer. He struggles to make free throws at a high rate and lacks a degree of explosiveness operating in traffic. Uh, overall, I don't think that's that bad. Uh, Donovan Klingon, I think he was projected to go a little bit higher up, and he had a good amount of success uh, matching up against Saki Day in that championship game. And just in the entire Yukon Huskies March Madness run, so a very talented dude. Uh, I think that he's going to have a decent amount of success in this level. 
Young Grudge, you got Anthony Simons, you got Jaden Sharp, you got uh, Scoot Anderson. Uh, you throw in a, a young big man in with them, and I think that he is one of the most promising center prospects for sure. So, yeah, good pick. I like it. Then, at number eight, we've got the San Antonio Spurs selecting Rob Dillingham, and uh, he immediately gets drafted, uh, not drafted, traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, Rob Dillingham, I have known about for a while. Obviously, he was at Kentucky. He also went to the Donda Academy before that, um, and under his strengths, let me, let me restart. Point guard out of Kentucky, 6'1", 164 pounds. He has the most dynamic scoring guard in this draft. Uh, he has shiftiness, ball handling, passing, and shot making abilities. Average 15.2 points a game in 23 minutes. Uh, and he was coming off the bench. But he lacks the ideal size and physicality to absorb contact in the lane and hold his own defensively. He has only... 6 foot 3 wingspan and under 170 pounds well you can train up uh, you can't teach height but you can get weight you can get your weight up for sure uh, I say that as if I've ever been able to get my weight up I have not but you know this guy's a professional his uh, transformation I've seen a couple of photos already he's already way more jacked than he used to be um, and I think for the Spurs to do this I don't know who else they would have taken. I've heard about Rob Dillingham to the Spurs for a while, but I think Stefan Castle is honestly a nice move, uh, a facilitator. Rob Dillingham is scoring, but with Wemby, maybe you want the focal point of your offense to be Wemby, so you want a guy who can get Wemby the ball. And so the fact that you already took Castle, there's no need to have Dillingham as well. So to swap Dillingham for more assets in the future, it's not horrible like still a net positive maybe you could have taken someone else that can immediately contribute but I guess Wemby has a lot of time um and then for the Minnesota Timberwolves it's kind of cool uh Mike Conley yeah his days are numbered you get a young guard that is going to be very electric alongside Anthony Edwards as long as their play styles match it's awesome uh it can I mean, he's already used to coming off the bench, so you plug him in, you see how he does, and eventually you can train him up to take over that starting role. So I think it's a great move by Minnesota. We'll see how it actually works in terms of chemistry, but good work by them. Then at number nine, we've got the Memphis Grizzlies selecting Zach Ede, center out of Purdue. He clocks in at seven foot four, two hundred and ninety nine. you watch Martin Ma March Madness, you know about this guy. He was the heart and soul of the Purdue Boilermakers, uh, kind of carrying them all the way to the finals. And under his strengths, it says, Ide is one of the biggest and most productive players in the sport. He has a 7 foot 11 wingspan and a 9 foot 7 standing reach, but it's his level of physicality, conditioning, and confidence that gives him more upside than the previous players in his mold. And then, uh, under weaknesses, it talks about his speed, and he under the microscope defensively because of his speed. Yeah. So sometimes your centers are slower. I've definitely dealt with that. I feel like uh, watching uh, some guys and Zaggy Day. I'm glad that he went top 10. I feel like after the run that he had and everything that he's done for Purdue, all these like back-to-back -back number one seeds, give him his flowers, draft him top 10, and Memphis is a team that really needed a big. I saw a lot of things saying that Memphis wanted to go after Donovan Klingon. Obviously, he's off the board, so take the next best option. Um, and yeah, uh, Stephen Adams is gone. You had Stephen Adams. He was a big part of your success when you were the number two seed. So, try and get someone a big body dude that can play uh, his kind of role. And we'll see. John Moran already posted about him. He seems to be pretty happy with the pick. Uh, I think it fits the hole that the Grizzlies had pretty well. So, good job. Then, number 10 at the Utah Jazz. 
they select shooting guard Cody Williams, um, six foot seven, 178 pound shooting guard out of Colorado. He is the brother brother of um, Jalen Williams, the one on the OKC Thunder. So you know his family is already popping off in the league. People are gonna want to tap into that untapped potential. <laughs> Under his strengths, it says Williams is a rangy perimeter player whose size, length, and flashes of transition scoring, playmaking, and defensive versatility give him intriguing upside. Whereas for his weaknesses, it says lacking a degree of strength, perimeter shooting, and all-around consistency, Williams struggled to produce late in his freshman season and was hampered by injuries after a promising start. So yeah, he's a young dude, and the season didn't go as well, but... I think when you have the genes of Jalen Williams and you've already shown flashes, the potential is just going to get very mouth-watering. You're going to want to buy in on this guy before it's too late, and so I think it's a good move by the Jazz. The Jazz, uh, yeah, I don't know what their plan of action is exactly, but if you have Danny Ainge in your building, I'm not worried. I, I feel like that man is pretty good at his job, so I, I wouldn't be worried if you're a Jazz fan. I like the pick in itself, and just in terms of development or uh, what the future of the franchise looks like, he'll figure it out for you for sure. No worries there. Then, at number 11, with a pick belonging to the Chicago Bulls, we have them selecting Small forward, Matas Buzelis, uh, 6'9", 197 pound. Small forward, as I said, out of the G League Ignite team. And uh, this is a steal, uh, just based on his overall ranking. He was expected to go a bit higher. He's talking about dueling. Uh, I believe it was the number one overall, Zachary Rusaker. He was talking about going at him with him, so he's got that competitive spirit. And then under his strengths, it says he's a promising wing forward with positional size, a very explosive leaping ability, rim protecting instincts, and uh, he's developing in, uh, versatility on both ends of the floor. Uh, and then it says under his weaknesses that his average length and thin frame are limiting factors. He's also a streaky jumper who is still developing his ball handling ability, which made it difficult for him to score efficiently. So ball handling, hopefully he can train that up, and hopefully he can get some extra pounds in, but um, just based on potential and where he was projected to go to where he went, I think this is a good pick from the Chicago Bulls. Um, very nice. I, I feel like I did see him in other mock drafts going a bit higher. So if he drops to 11, he drops to 11, but good on the Bulls to sweep him up. And then, coming in at number 12, we have the pick from the Oklahoma City Thunder, who have their massive flurry of picks in the next five years. And they went with Nikola Topic out of Serbia. He is a point guard, coming in at 6'6", six six, 203 pounds. Um, his face is very interesting. I don't mean to be offensive when I say this, but he kind of reminds me of if you took Lamello Ball and s smashed his face with Sketch, the, uh, the streamer. If you smashed those guys' faces together, that's kind of what this guy looks like to me. Uh, it's very peculiar to look at. Uh, but under his strengths, it says the 18-year-old Dopich is the top pick and role shot creator in this draft. He's an elite ball handler, passer, and finisher. Proved to be creative force in the Adriatic League before losing his stint in the Euro League to a knee injury. He suffered a partially torn ACL in April, which might cause him to redshirt his rookie year. And if you're the Thunder, I don't think that is all that bad. You 
realizes it says that he has things to prove as a jump sh shooter and he's not a jet with the ball to compensate he has limited length and is a concern defensively but uh hopefully they can train those things up I feel like jet had his fair share of worries before coming into the league obviously he was much taller so the blocks and rim protection was something that he was good at but he's still a lane guy so the lane guys will just have to learn from one another i think it's a good landing spot for dopich and i think that the thunder like they do well with this pick after that moving into pick number 13 we've got devin carter point guard out of providence He's six foot two hundred and ninety-three pounds and he gets drafted to the Sacramento Kings in this year's draft. Uh, under Carter's strengths we've got that he is a defensive menace and a tenacious lead guard whose significant improvement as a jump shooter has caused his draft stock to explode as a junior. He averaged nineteen point seven pounds and eight points and eight point seven rebounds per game. And I think this is good just cause right around the draft, uh Sacramento Kings did trade away Davion Mitchell uh, and this European guy that they have on their team I don't know his name really um, he just cooked the Warriors in a couple games this year Sasha or something um, and in return they got Jaden McDaniels yeah Jaden McDaniels <laughs> I'm trying to remember if it's the right one but this is still a good pickup a defensive minded guard Devion Mitchell, you know, with that loss, you can see which one works out better. For the weaknesses, it says that he has questions to answer about his ball handling and shot creation, as well as his unorthodox shooting mechanics. Uh, but I don't think that's all that crazy. You know, Tyrese Halliburton found a way to thrive in this league, and so did some other unorthodox shooters. So I, I wouldn't be too worried about it if you are Devin Carter or the Sacramento Kings. And finally... You've got the 14th pick that belongs to the Washington Wizards after they made a trade with the Trailblazers. So you have the Washington Wizards selecting point guard Bob Carrington, 6'4", 195 pounds, out of Pittsburgh. It says here that Carrington is a big guard with a budding floor game whose late growth sport made him the most unexpected riser of the past year. And under the weaknesses, it says that while he has great size and he has packed on some major muscle, his frame is still a work in progress. Similarly, he shot the three well late in the season, but has to prove his consistency. So, it sounds like he, uh, he's getting to where he needs to be. He's had a, not a great frame, but he's getting there. And it sounds like he's trending the right way for his three-point shot. I mean, all of his weaknesses sound not that bad. And, uh, he, his, his strengths sound pretty good as well, so, based on everything that we've heard, not bad, uh, as far as Washington, it's doomed, <laughs> I, I don't think I heard very much at all of Bilal Colby, uh, from last year, he was not making waves, the only people I've heard about from Washington was Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, and Denny Edvija, and Denny is gone now, so, yeah, well, I don't, I don't blame Washington for picking him, I, I do feel very bad for Bob, we'll have to see what he can do, and, uh, you just pray, you hope for the best for him, because it's rough sledding out in Wizards County, and so with that, that concludes our top 14 uh, picks, which are our lottery picks. These are the most highly anticipated prospects. Um, so for the following list, I'm just going to read out the number, the team, and just like basic information, no more strengths and weaknesses. And if there's someone noteworthy, I will make a comment. So first up at number 15, we've got the Miami Heat selecting Kalel Ware out of Indiana, who is a center. Then at number 16, we have Jared McCain out of Duke being selected by the Philadelphia 
much I know about his TikTok game more than I know about his real game, to be honest. But, um, young guards that have some talent and charisma around Joel Embiid, it, it works. I, I don't know. In my mind, I just feel like when I saw Jared McCain went to the 76ers, I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then, coming in at number 17, the Los Angeles Lakers selected Dothan Knecht out of Tennessee, shooting forward. Um, you know, personally, I did not watch Tennessee at all in this year's March Madness, but everyone has been raving about this pick. Uh, it seems like Dothan Knecht is one of those, not necessarily a sleeper, just a slip-up guy who fell pretty far, and uh, great value for the Lakers to grab him at 17. Everyone's talking about his nickname, Knecht 4. <laughs> which is pretty cool to him. But, uh, yeah, I don't know too much about him. I saw some clip of LeBron talking about how they were tuning into this game specifically because Connect and uh, someone else were playing in it. So that's high praise if you're already being talked about months before you get drafted by the Lakers. Good on Dalton Connect and good on the Lakers for selecting him. That's about all I know. Uh, then at number 18, we have the Orlando Magic selecting Tristan De Silva, a uh, small forward out of Colorado. At number 19, we have the Toronto Raptors selecting Jacoby Walter, shooting guard out of Baylor. At number 20, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers selecting Jalen Tyson, shooting guard out of California. <laughs> and then at Number 21, we have the New Orleans Pelicans selecting Yves Misi, a uh, center out of Baylor. At number 22, we have the... Is it the Suns, or did they get... Did it get traded to someone else? Pick belongs to the Nuggets. We have the Nuggets selecting Duran Holmes the second. Uh, 6'9", 236 pounds forward out of Dayton. Then at number 23, we have the Milwaukee Bucks selecting A.J. Johnson from the country of USA, a uh, shooting guard. And then at number 24, we have the Wizards selecting yet again. Uh, they pick up Kaishan George, a shooting guard out of Miami. Then after that, we've got uh, the at number 25, the New York Knicks selecting Pacome Dadiet out of France. He has a shooting guard as well. Then after that, at number 26, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder. Wait. Yeah, the Oklahoma City Thunder selecting Dylan Jones, a uh, small forward out of Weber State. Then at number 27, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves selecting Terrence Shannon Jr., shooting guard out of Illinois. Then we have at number 28, the Phoenix Suns selecting shooting small forward Ryan Dunn out of Virginia. And then, at pick number 29, we have the Utah Jazz selecting Isaiah Collier, point guard out of USC. Uh, I think that this is a good pick. I know that when I was doing my prize picks bidding, every once in a while I would see Isaiah Collier, and he had very high lines all the time. And he was just a guy that I had heard about, and in this draft, that is gold. That is the ultimate reference. If I, as a person who doesn't watch college basketball, have heard of your name in this year's draft, yeah, maybe you are a stud. We'll find out. But a uh, good pick by the Utah Jazz. And then at number 30, we have the Boston Celtics selecting shooting guard Baylor Skyrim out of Creighton University. So that wraps up round one. Now I will get into round two. So, pick number one in the second round, or the 31st pick overall, goes to the Toronto Raptors. They pick up Jonathan M Mokbo, uh, center out of San Francisco. At 32, we have the Utah 
Jazz selecting Kyle Flabowski, power forward out of Duke. Pretty good pick. Uh, he slept quite a bit because of girlfriend issues. Uh, sounds like he was groomed as a kid a little bit. His he's 20. His girlfriend is 28, and this woman uh, started talking to him when he was under the age, and so that has caused family issues. This all that I'm getting from an Instagram post. I don't know if any of it is real, to be honest. Um, I didn't sit and watch the entire draft and watch them talk about everyone. I did not. Maybe I watched a couple of Duke games, but I don't really remember Kyle like that um, in March Madness. And so, from what I'm hearing, he slipped for non-basketball related issues. And I know Jason Tatum said a lot of people will regret passing on Kyle, so he's hyping up his Duke alum. We'll see, we'll see. But uh, Utah Jazz, very promising draft thus far. After that, you have 33, the Milwaukee Bucks selecting Tyler Smith, a uh, small forward out of the G League Ignite. Then we have at number 34, the New York Knicks selecting Tyler Kolek, point guard out of Marquette. At number 35, we have the Indiana Pacers trading for Johnny Furphy, shooting guard out of Kansas. Then at number 36, we have the San Antonio Spurs trading for Juan Nunez, point guard out of Spain. At number 37, we have the Detroit Pistons selecting Bobby Clintman, power forward, <laughs> sorry, power forward out of Sweden. Sweden caught me off guard. Oh wow, this is kind of cool. Uh, after that, we have at number 38, the Oklahoma City Thunder selecting AJ Mitchell, point guard out of UC Santa Barbara. That is where I go. So I, I'll be honest, I've never heard of this guy. I've never seen him play. But the fact that he went to my school is pretty cool. Uh, it shows me my alternate life path, you know. Alternate universe could have been, no, it couldn't have been me. I was never good at basketball. <laughs> uh, I didn't really, I didn't have dreams like that. I had football dreams. But, uh, yeah, that's besides the point. At number 39, we've got the, Minis the Memphis Grizzlies selecting Jalen Wells, shooting guard out of Washington State. At number 40, we have the Phoenix Suns uh, selecting Osasire Igodaro, uh, power forward out of Marquette. At number 41, we have the Philadelphia 76ers selecting Adam Bona, C, uh, center out of UCLA. At number 42, we have the Charlotte Hornets selecting KJ Simpson, point guard out of Colorado. At number 43, we have yeah, another Nicola. Uh, this is the Atlanta Hawks selecting Nikola Juricic, uh, shooting guard from Serbia, if you could not tell. And then at number 44, we have the Miami Heat uh, selecting Pele Larson, shooting guard out of Arizona. Then at number 45, we have the Toronto Raptors selecting Jamal Sheed, point guard out of Houston. Then at number 46, you have the Los Angeles Clippers with their new logo, which is throwing me off so much. I, I mean, it's not like their old logo is even that good, but it's just weird to see their new one. I'm not used to it at all yet. They select Cameron Christie, shooting guard out of Minnesota. And if you are a fan of the Lakers or just have experienced Lakers basketball, you'll know that uh, they have a guy on their team called Max Christie. And so, yes, this is his younger brother. Um, yeah, Max Christie, young dude, has a little bit of potential. Maybe, I don't know, it's hard to assess. But yeah, his younger brother is leagued now. Then at number 47, you've got the New Orleans Pelicans selecting Antonio Reeves, shooting guard out of Kentucky. At number 
Phoenix Suns and the Philadelphia 76ers each forfeited a second round pick for violating free agency rules. Okay, I was wondering, because I knew that Isaiah Thomas was Mr. Irrelevant and he was picked 60th overall, I was wondering how is it possible that there's only 58 this year. But yeah, coming in, number 58, you have the Dallas Mavericks selecting Ariel Hukporty, center out of Germany. And so this year, even though he wasn't the 60th pick, uh, our good friend Ariel gets to serve as Mr. Irrelevant, even though he's at 58. So that concludes this year's NBA draft recap. Uh, you know, give you a good amount of information for those first 14 lottery picks. After that, it was just a bunch of guys. I really have not heard a lot of them. Uh, I'll, I'll give the nod to what. Jared McCain, Bronny James, uh, I'd heard of Isaiah Collier, I had heard of... <laughs> Maybe not anyone else, to be honest, after those first 14. Yeah, maybe A.J. Johnson's name is somewhat familiar, but yeah, even within the top 14, I think it was like Nikola Topic, uh, Zach Ede, Rob Dillingham, Donovan Klingon. Ray Shepard, Alex Saar. It was just a very limited draft in terms of my knowledge. Uh, I don't keep up with college scouting as much. It's just whatever gets thrown in front of me by NBA podcasters or posters on Instagram or uh, draft analyzer, Pepper Gus, Stephen A. Smith, all those hooligans. Uh, and yeah, I just did not hear much about this year's draft in the I heard a lot of negative things, and that's kind of a disappointment, you know, it's obviously a huge accomplishment for all these prospects to become league-ready and join the league, so I hope that they prove everyone wrong, I hope that this is a very strong class, and that we end up remembering the names of all these dudes, and we'll just have to see, um, international, international top picks are becoming very successful, you know, you've got France selecting number one overall last year, number one and two this year. The France takeover is real. They're putting out great prospects. There are a lot of Frenchmen on the board this year. So we'll see. We'll see what they can do in the Olympics. I don't think that they can do anything this year, but if all of these guys end up being ballers, maybe in four years they have a shot when a lot of the American legends are retired and Wemby is in year five. You know, it could, could be some scary stuff. Um, but yeah, that's about all. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes awake for this video. So thank you for bearing me with me on this one. And uh, I hope you got the recap to a link.